everyone, and welcome to today's broadcast and keynote presentation, Multiplex Molecular Panels at Syndromic Infectious Diseases Testing, presented by Dr. Vera Tesic, an Assistant Professor of Pathology and Assistant Director of Clinical Microbiology and Immunology Laboratories at the University of Chicago Medicine. I'm Dr. Susie Valdez of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. We're delighted to bring you this educational web seminar presented by LabRoots. LabRoots is the leading scientific social networking website and producer of educational virtual events and webinars. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone that today's event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. Just click on that ask a question box located on the far left of your screen and type those questions into the drop down box that appear on the screen. Our speaker will respond to your questions via email. If you have any trouble hearing or seeing the presentation, just click on the ask a question box and let us know you're having a problem. This presentation is educational and thus offers continuing education credits. Please click on the continuing education credits tab located on the top right corner of your presentation window and follow the process for obtaining your credits. Without further ado, let me join me in welcoming our keynote presenter today, Dr. Vera Tesic. I will now turn the presentation over to her. Welcome, Dr. Betsik. Thank you for the introduction, Dr. Valdez. I will discuss uh, syndromic testing for the infectious diseases, and I will also talk about experience with that type of testing at our institution. So I have nothing to disclose. And this is the brief outline of my talk. Um, I'm going to talk about this novel diagnostics by multiplex molecular panels, their clinical and economic impacts, advantages, and limitations as well. So as you can see, syndromic panels for multiplex pathogen detection employ molecular testing that can assist uh, in the diagnosis of respiratory gastrointestinal central nervous system infections and also blood infections. These approach panels are used to test uh, for a broad array of pathogens that are most commonly associated with a particular syndrome. Uh, a number of commercial FDA cleared assays, um, um, FDA cleared multiplex panels are now available. They have variable technology and can use nested uh, PCR, real-time PCR, PCR VDRA, also can range in complexity from moderate to high, and also they differ between the cells in hands-on time, but they generally have comparable uh, performance. Uh, this system offers several advantages over conventional testing, including relatively easy sample to result workflow, and also they have very rapid turnaround time. So why are they important? So obviously they fix um, uh, infections that, uh, that are happening in the, uh, our patients. So one of them are respiratory infections. Uh, they, they are associated with considerable mor morbidity and mortality, and they will also contribute to considerable cost in the healthcare budget. Uh, respiratory infections are caused by a variety of viruses, bacteria, and fungi. And the most viruses, they do belong to families of paramyxoviride, orthomyxoviride, coronaviride, adenoviride, and coronaviride. Uh, viral pathogens are easily transmitted from person to person, and some of them can mutate frequently, increasing the risk of the emergence of a novel pathogen with, with the pandemic potential. Among the bacteria that are causing respiratory infections, uh, important ones would be chlamydophila pneumonia, mycoplasma pneumonia, and bordetella species. So for all these respiratory infections, uh, traditional modes of detections are by, by bacterial and viral cultures. Also, some antigen tests can be employed, and also monoplex or small panel PCRs uh, are currently in use. So for a multiplex panel uh, that are commercially available, there are several of them, and they have uh, variable technology. They differ between themselves in complexity, hands-on, and turnaround time. Uh, they uh, differ, uh, differ between themselves with a the number of targets. Uh, from They can range from 14 to 27. 
Uh, and also they kind of cover the most common uh, pathogens causing uh, respiratory infections. So influenza A and B, viral influenza, RSV, adenoviruses, coronaviruses, common metanumoviruses, and among bacteria, again, Lamidophila, Mycoplasma, and Bordetella. Uh, so far, there have been many uh, publications, and they have been compared to one another, and also to laboratory-developed monoplex PCR assays in many studies. And the assay performances show similar results for most of the targets, except significant sensitivity differences have been observed for adenovirus, influenza B, viral influenza 3, and also human metanumovirus detection. Uh, at our institution, we also uh, detected, for example, two cases of respiratory infection with Bordetella bronchiseptica. It flagged positive for Bordetella precasis on the respiratory vinyl, viral panel. So uh, it's important and it's special for laboratorians and clinicians to understand the performance characteristics of these new panels, as well as recognize the prevalence of individual pathogens in a given patient population uh, that will affect the predictive value of their test. So, for example, in this case, uh, patients were actually positive for Bordetella bronchiseptica, and that was uh, confirmed by culture, but flagged false positive for pertussis on respiratory viral panel. So also at our institution, uh, we also detected, uh, uh, to, at our institution, uh, we also were able to detect um, uh, enterovirus D68 outbreak in the summer and fall of 2014 using this uh, broad range uh, multiplex panels. They were suspected uh, um, um, at our institution, among other places as well in Midwest, due to increased detection of rhinovirus and provirus by the, uh, our method of choice film array in patients with severe respiratory disease, uh, which was also disproportionately affecting those patients with asthma. Uh, so regional hospital level data from Missouri, Illinois, and Colorado show the increases in respiratory illness between August and September of 2014 compared to the same time to the previous years. This would not have been possible to detect that quickly without the use of respiratory panels. So the use of these panels ensures early initiation of appropriate therapy reduction uh, in use of antibiotics and timely implementation of isolation procedures and health in syndromic surveillance by public health authorities. Also, rapid uh, testing can also result in cost savings to the healthcare system through reduction in emergency department boarding time and also decreased duration of empiric antiviral therapy. So, in this study by RAPO um, and other authors, they showed the diagnosis of influenza by film array was associated with significantly lower odds ratios for admissions, length of stay, and duration of antimicrobial use, and also number of tests radiographs in the, their patient population. Uh, for example, in another study, but Krause uh, and others, for children in particular, uh, they didn't show that uh, that uh, use of these multiple panel short in hospital stay or less an antibiotic consumption or overall cost, but they showed that it has proven beneficial in severely immunocompromised uh, patients and patients after all genetic stem cell transplantation. So, um, in petite study that was done at our institution, we found that improved turnaround time of respiratory panels led to discontinuation of empirical seltamivir therapy among the patients found to be influenza negative. Also, another study by Bandage reported shorter length of stay and decreased time to patient isolation. So, these new novel panels are likely to allow the epidemiology of certain pathogens coronaviruses to be better defined than in the past. And also, it, it is more common during the influenza season than uh, it will be uh, recognized more than they used to in the past. Some uh, pathogens, like also mycoplasma pneumonia, were commonly missed due to a lack of clinical suspicion or available routine testing. So laboratory in conjunction with clinicians have to define uh, which patient population will benefit with broad panel detection. 
At our institution, we use large panel for immunocompromised patients in particular, whereas otherwise healthy patients with mild self-limited respiratory infections that present to the emergency department or in clinics are offered smaller panels with limited pathogen manual. So utilization guidelines for specific patient populations, for example, children versus adults, also immunocompetent versus immunocompromised patients and inpatients versus outpatients are needed for the proper use of these assays. All these measures, measures will, uh, with limitation of additional unnecessary testing and diagnostic proce procedures, uh, they might yield an ultimate reduction in cost. So to switch gears, uh, let's talk about uh, enteric diseases, uh, which are leading cause of illness and death in the developing world. Uh, because of modern advances in public health, um, uh, they, uh, uh, all, they all have led to decline in infectious diarrhea in the uh, modern world. However, uh, death and acute gastroenteritis they remain a significant threat to travelers or are associated with improperly prepared food in the United States. So pathogens of interest include, um, uh, among bacteria, Campylobacter species, Salmonella, Shigella, and Escherichia coli, among viruses, norovirus, and enteric adenoviruses, and among parasites, and amoeba, histolytica, Dardia, cyclospore, and cryptosporidium. Additional modes of infection are bacterial stool cultures, online parasite exam, antigen tests, and uh, monoplex PCRs. So that's why all these numeral panels uh, that are commercially available uh, also uh, have this uh, number of targets uh, on their uh, menu. And they can range from uh, 6 to 22. Uh, they also include uh, bacteria, viruses, and parasites. Uh, the multiple studies show them to be more sensitive than conventional testing methodology. So, for example, uh, these are our experiences with the GI panel. Two years ago, we implemented the GI panel, and within a week of implementation, we had five cases positive for E. coli of 157, which is schizotoxin toxin producing uh, Escherichia coli. Because uh, this was such an unusual cluster of results, we immediately notified the uh, Department of Public Health. All patients uh, that came uh, for the medical care at our institution ate at the same local restaurant. Uh, unfortunately, this restaurant was also preparing uh, huge quantities of food for the Taste of Chicago, which is a big outdoor festival that was about to start a day later. Uh, that was uh, July 1st, I believe, two years ago. So the source of many uh, cases um, was rapidly identified and the restaurant was closed thus preventing the outbreak from spreading further. Uh, at the end of this outbreak, there was a total of 69 confirmed cases and 37 probable cases were identified, and cilantro was uh, implicated as, as the most likely food vehicle causing this outbreak. So this early action can help to improve uh, both con and contain this outbreak and also uh, faster the patient treatment and outcomes. So policies also, that promote vigilance within the laboratory that use these uh, uh, panels will help to identify unusual trends and to communicate they, their importance to appropriate institutions, uh, such as the Department of uh, Public Health, and also allow the source of these outbreaks to be identified quickly, limiting their number of patients in, affected. Uh, so this, this um, slide uh, is showing some of the re most recent studies that uh, is done by Sibulski, showing better sensitivity for bacterial pathogen detection in 35.3% uh, specimens compared to only 60% uh, detection for culture. Also, the eye panel had better detection uh, of parasites in Entamoeba histolytica and Cardia lamblia. 1.4 to compared to only 0.3 percent, and also detect uh, viral or parasitic pathogens in 137 cases, in which additional diagnostic tests were not at all ordered. So this allowed uh, also increased recognitions of patients with co-infections. Patients also received targeted therapy or were de-escalated sooner, um, or were de-escalated if a treatment was not necessary. 
Also positive gigatoxin um, uh, E. coli results led to discontinuation of antimicrobials in eight of nine cases and therapy had been initiated empirically. With the median time of discontinuation was of eight hours following the reporting of results. So this kind of further demonstrates um, importance of these uh, panels with a rapid general time that will affect clinical decision making. In pediatric population done by study in, uh, by Stockman, uh, the patients presented with ED identification was improved, but did not produce uh, reduction, subsequent reduction in healthcare encounters. Also, another study by Friedman identified potential to simplify testing and accelerate reporting when compared to conventional microbiology methods. However, the impact of the panels uh, didn't uh, uh, impact management of the patient uh, and the treatment and outcome is fully understood at this time. So uh, further studies are needed to evaluate uh, health economic impact of their panels compared to with standard methods. Uh, at our institution, we haven't evaluated clinical impact, uh, but of the uh, false positive results, we had three positive uh, results for Vibrio cholera. Patients were not with risk factors and didn't confirm a Department of Public Health. So laboratory in conjunction with clinicians have to define which patient population will benefit uh, with this broad panel de uh, detection. Uh, at our institutions, we haven't restricted ordering. So it's up on clinicians to make a judgment based on symptoms or epidemiologic data to order this test. Since bringing uh, this uh, panel, we had increasing costs, but we stopped performing uh, all the other tests uh, that were used in the past, such as bacterial stool culture, stool antigens tests, uh, and also we stopped uh, multiple standouts for uh, molecular detection for some viral stool pathogens that we didn't have on our menu. And obviously, uh, because these uh, uh, results are available in, in within an hour of re receipt in the laboratory, we significantly improved our turnaround time. Also, uh, technologies that were used to perform these assays were employed to do other tasks in the laboratory. Uh, and all these measures um, limited an additional necessary testing uh, uh, and additional diagnostic procedures, so, so they might contribute to the ultimate reduction in cost. Uh, so to help providers for, uh, better understand these results, we also introduced appended comments uh, with all the results. So for example, for Clostridium difficile, uh, we notified them that up to 15% uh, of patients could be asymptomatic carriers. Also for these E. coli, different E. coli results, we uh, also append comments that they are present in both healthy controls and symptomatic patients, and only certain strains are associated with the disease. For uh, sugar toxin producing E. coli, uh, we notify them uh, that antibiotic treatment is uh, associated with hemolytic or uremic syndrome risk, and also um, panels are not able to uh, distinguish Shigella versus uh, one of the strains of E. coli. So let's switch here to uh, bloodstream infections. Um, so it's well known that sepsis accounts for 20, 000, $20 billion uh, dollars in annual cost in the United States, uh, the healthcare system. They represent also 5.2% of the national cost for all of hospitalization. Those, those are the data from 2011. And this results in uh, nearly 1.1 million discharges um, in that year uh, from U.S. hospitals. So also it counted uh, for almost 7% of all Medicare costs in 2011. So the number of people uh, dying from sepsis has, has almost doubled in the past 20 years with incidents approximating uh, 750,000 per year in the United States. And all these infections have 25 to 70% mortality rates. Uh, a delay in implementing antibiotics by more than one hour uh, can significantly increase the risk of mortality. Early fluid resuscitation combined with um, initiation of appropriate uh, antimicrobial therapy improves outcomes. 
Consequently, uh, approximately 20% to 30% of patients with severe sepsis receive inadequate uh, empiric uh, antimicrobial therapy. On the other hand, uh, with indiscriminate use of uh, multiple antibiotics, uh, um, they can lead to some adverse events, uh, also to increase in C. difficile infection, and also they can lead to a rise in antimicrobial resistance. So timely diagnosis of bloodstream infections is extremely important. This picture here uh, shows the routine laboratory methodology for identification of positive blood culture. After blood culture is drawn, it's sent to laboratory, and then um, after incubation, which, which can last from a few hours to a few days, uh, bottle, uh, blood culture bath looks like positive. Uh, and then after that is pulled from the incubation instrument and gram stain is performed. Clinician is notified, then it takes further 24 additional hours for identification and 48 hours or longer for susceptibility. Uh, so this slide shows molecular te techniques that, that are now available uh, for a diagnosis of bloodstream infection. So they can be broadly divided into the ones that perform direct detection on cold blood and the others that are currently FDA cleared uh, are multiplex molecular panels that utilize positive blood cultures for, it, uh, for detection. So there are several commercially available uh, multiplex PCR um, blood pathogen panels, a bit variable technology again. They also differ between themselves with uh, complexity and hands-on and turnaround time. They all uh, have similar uh, pathogens on the list that are able to, that are, they are able to detect, uh, which are would be the most commonly encountered bacteria in blood culture. They also uh, are able to detect some important genetic resistant markers and uh, yeast. So you can see them listed here. At our institution, we evaluated two platforms and found that they correctly identified bacteria in 90% of monobacterial cultures that we analyzed, the time to identification uh, that are significantly shorter than those uh, for identifications from the routine uh, microbiology techniques. Uh, so there are also several studies uh, that showed clinical impact. One of them uh, was a large study done by Banerjee at, at Mayo Clinic that tested three arms of patient population with uh, positive blood cultures, one that had no intervention and used the uh, standards of care, the other that used rapid molecule, uh, multiplex PCR panels, and third uh, that used rapid multiplex PCR panels plus antimicrobial stewardship intervention. And you can see that all uh, three groups are similar in size, around 200 patients each. Studies show that uh, panels are uh, available to identify microorganisms uh, in positive blood cultures within few hours, as opposed to the usual several days. And their use have the greatest impact uh, when the results are delivered to an expert uh, in antimicrobial stewardship, either pharmacist or ID clinician, who can provide an individual and rapid guidance to providers carry for the patient. So, uh, these are listed here are emerging technologies for a molecular diagnosis of sepsis that are available for whole blood. So there is no need for incubation. There is no need for blood cultures. And they're uh, basically not dependent on microbial growth, but they're not yet that they're cleared. The results can be uh, obtained only from four to 10 hours from the blood draw. This, this would be significant. Uh, in improvement in detection once they're uh, available to wider uh, laboratories. So clinical impact for this rapid identification obviously enables uh, targeted therapy and leads to improved clinical out outcomes, shortening of hospital stay and reduction in healthcare costs. Uh, clinical and economic benefits are demonstrated only when combined with a robust antimicrobial stewardship program. So costs are that implementation leads to increased costs, increased testing, increased labor, and increased numbers of instruments needed. And conventional uh, microbiology uh, for blood culture methods uh, identification and susceptibility are still needed. 
for the pathogens that are not covered on these panels and also still for susceptibility. Uh, the pros are that it can be used either in a near patient facility or clinical laboratory and doesn't require uh, personnel proficient in gram chain reading and test is done in real time 24 hours and reporting is obviously 24 hours. So let's switch to meningitis and encephalitis uh, infections that, could, that are associated with significant morbidity and mortality. Uh, as you can see here, they can be caused by different viruses, bacteria and fungi. Uh, and so far, there's only one uh, FDA clear panel uh, uh, that contains uh, 14 targets with rapid turnaround time. And there is one that's up and coming, but it's not FDA cleared. So a large study was done uh, by Lieber uh, on almost 1,600 patients' samples and found uh, after a duplication and discordant results that there was 84.4 positivity uh, uh, and more than 99.9 .9 negative agreement between AMI panel and conventional methods. There were some false positives among them uh, false positives were reported for strep pneumo and cryptococcus. Uh, so at our institution, we also found, uh, we also had one uh, false positive uh, for cryptococcus. Cryptococcal antigen and culture was negative for our patient too. So this is another study uh, done by Graf. Uh, this was a smaller study uh, uh, conducted on uh, pediatric population and found percent of agreement uh, that ranged uh, from 50 to 100 percent. The highest number of false positive and false negative was reported in this study for HSV-1 uh, detection. Also, some studies by Hammers found two uh, cases that were panel positive but culture negative for hemophilus and listeria. Well, Texas study found uh, that 11 out of 48 patients positive on MME panel and negative on routine techniques, and also five uh, ME panel negative results, but positive for off-panel pathogens, which would be expected. So to help illustrate the uh, usefulness of this panel, I'd like you to, uh, to review two cases with you. So this panel is showing a uh, positive uh, uh, gram stain uh, and the gram stain on CSF was reported as a gram negative bacilli, gram negative cocci, and gram positive bacilli. Uh, so, our results, uh, culture results, and uh, any panel uh, results uh, was actually uh, streptococcus pneumonia. So, another case. Uh, uh, Oh, sorry. Another case, this is showing the gram stain. Uh, gram stain was reported as bacterial culture no growth uh, and also gram negative hypococci. Uh, but on uh, ME panel was negative, but at least that helped us rule out Neisseria meningitis. Uh, and also, uh, uh, upon sequencing, uh, result was acinic factor radio resistance, which can be confusing on the gram stain. Uh, because it looks like gram-negative diplococci. So to help uh, clinicians better understand, we also appended uh, uh, comments. So these are the comments that are available for our meningitis and encephalitis panels. So for example, this panel detects only K1 serotype of E. coli, negative results do not include other serotypes of E. coli. Hemophilus influences Cocus pneumonia have preliminary results that may not indicate active disease if they are tested positive on any panel. Interpreting in conjunction with other uh, bacterial, uh, other, uh, bacterial culture results. Also for CMV and other viruses, if there is positivity, preliminary results may detect latent or reactivated viruses. And also, whenever we have a positive cryptococcus neoformans, uh, uh, automatically cryptococcal antigen and cultures are ordered as a reflex. So at our institutions, we also institution we also had uh, experience with field array biotrat panels. Um, you can see some of them uh, listed here. They are not approved at the cleared uh, for diagnostic use uh, in the United States. And this is one of the panels that we used, and that was actually 
uh, during the uh, Ebola outbreak because we were among once the hospitals uh, in Chicago Ebola response network. So um, that helped us a lot uh, as well during this outbreak. So what are some uh, considerations when uh, all these panels uh, are considered? So obviously right best for the right patient at the right time. Uh, so also if you consider uh, intermicrobial stewardship considerations, uh, we should worry about right interpretation, right interpretation, right and antimicrobial, and right time to be delivered. So, if it's not delivered to uh, appropriate clinician uh, or pharmacist, uh, that will provide feedback and actually change the patient therapy. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, if nobody acts on the results, they're just done in vain. So, conclusions: What are the uh, cons uh, to bring all these panels? They can show some reduced sensitivity and specificity for certain targets compared to monoplex molecular assays, but they obviously show increased sensitivity and specificity compared to traditional laboratory tests. There is increased upfront cost, and there's still need for some traditional tests, such as susceptibility testing. Uh, pros are because they enhance and speed up diagnostics, they have, uh, there is the ability to test everything in only one specimen, and less, there is less specimen draw from the patients, and which can draw to the patient satisfaction. Also, there is, uh, laboratories can institute increased uh, enhanced algorithms for test ordering. There is a better workflow and uh, reduce hands-on time. We also have standardized testing, uh, and ultimately can lead to reduction of costs. Also, uh, we are detecting pathogens that were previously hard to identify and were not thought from the clinicians that could be causing disease. And also, uh, we are detect detecting more uh, polymicrobial infection, which allows uh, to for best microorganism surveillance, and it leads to far faster identification of outbreaks. And also, it allows better infection control. So. Sometimes things to consider would be just because you can does not necessarily mean you should immediately. So careful integration of what is technically feasible with what is clinically important. This is according to Dr. Raymond Bartlett, and we should still adhere to these. So all laboratories should analyze clinical impact and cost effectiveness prior to adoption to avoid production of substantial amounts of information at considerable cost. This will conclude my presentation, and I'm open to any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tesic, for that informative presentation. We will now start the Q&A portion of the webinar, and we'll address some of the most commonly asked questions by our viewers. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question drop-down box located on the far left of your presentation window, type your questions into the box that appear on the screen, and click the Send button. Our speaker will follow up with your questions via email. So let's get started. Our first question, <clears throat> Dr. Tesic, is when did you institute appended comments for GI and ME panel? Uh, so we institute them uh, together when we launched the testing. So uh, before we brought tests um, at our institution, uh, there were uh, multiple talks with clinicians. So all these comments uh, were actually products of mutual efforts of ID team infection control and antimicrobial stewardship. And also at the end, like this is now for three years that we are using GI panel and ME panel. It helped a lot because we didn't get many consults in microbiology plan. Thank you, Dr. Tesic. And given the reduced sensitivity and specificity of certain pathogens described on the ME panel, do you still offer other monoplex molecular assays? For, for some uh, assays, we still do. For example, we still offer HSV 1 and 2, uh, and we also offer cryptococcal antigen. Obviously, we offer culture, uh, for example, with the ME panel as well. Uh, uh, because uh, it was reported uh, in the literature that uh, for some tests, uh, uh, ME panel can have uh, 
limit of detection, for example, for CryptoCoq, uh, 100 colony forming units. So cryptococcal antigen assay can be more sensitive in some uh, instances. And also limit of detection for HSV-1 uh, is 250 TCID uh, per ml. And for HSV-2, um, it's at 250. So which can be less sensitive for some FDA cleared or lab developed assays. Uh, so we still, uh, we still offer uh, HSV-1 and 2. So, for example, if there is a high clinical suspicion, a physician is not stopped to order additional assays. Uh, but so far, uh, especially they tend to do uh, in our pediatric population based on these uh, reports. So, for so far, for both HSP one and two, we, with this kind of testing in parallel, we didn't have any discrepancies so far. So maybe we will discourage it in the future. We'll see. And Dr. Tessic, would you like to provide the, the viewers with any closing remarks? Uh, I think, for example, it's great to be a microbiologist nowadays because there are many new technologies that are um, available. And I think use of these panels um, uh, uh, made available all these things that we did never knew before, all these new co-infections, all these new pathogens that are so prevalent in, in the population. And this rapid turnaround time, it's something that's amazing that we are able to provide our results so much faster. So it's exciting to employ new technologies whenever we can, I think, and when they are proven uh, useful uh, in our uh, patient population. Absolutely. And thank you again, Dr. Tessig, for your presentation and for your important research. I'd also like to thank LabRoots for making today's educational webcast possible. Before we go, I want to remind everyone that today's webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through December 2018. You will receive an email from LabRoots letting you know when this webcast will be available for replay. Please share that announcement with your colleagues who may have missed today's event. That's all for now, and thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.